Welcome everyone to our first podcast. The aim of this interview is to raise the awareness of oral health in diabetes, either you have dry mouth or not. We are here to discuss a pressing issue which I believe is overlooked within the medical society and general public. For example, did you know one of the oral complications of diabetes is dry mouth? Saliva is a natural healer and it is important to prevent it from decaying. Oh look, I am so passionate about diabetes and oral health, I forgot to introduce myself. I am Aileen Baysan, a clinical academic, working at Barts and the London School of Medicine and Dentistry, Queen Mary University of London. I am interested in quantity and quality of saliva in diabetes patients. My ultimate aim is to raise the awareness about oral health in diabetes patients within our medical colleagues and general public and to introduce oral care as part of diabetes care. Tim is an insulin-dependent diabetic since 1972. He was diagnosed when he was 10 years old. Our podcast will focus on his perspective as living with diabetes type 1 and his conversation about how we can do better for diabetes patients from the day they are diagnosed, their treatment options and how oral health can be affected and managed. When Tim and I first met, he mentioned how he benefited being in our clinical study. Hello Tim. Hello. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. Good, excellent. Shall we start talking about your dry mouth and how severe it is? On a scale of 1 to 10, how dry your mouth is then? Okay, during the small hours of the night, if I wake up to go to the toilet, it is bun dry. So I must say at least the uh, rate is 9. Oh Tim, it must be really inconvenient for you. How about then, how did you learn what you know about diabetes and dry mouth? Well, I always wondered why my mouth was so dry in the night. And after I mentioned it to my consultant, who was Professor Hitman, he seemed very, very interested in it. He wasn't interested verbally, but I could see that he did not stop writing. It's great that your dry mouth generated some interest in him. How do you think diabetes with dry mouth affects someone's life then? Well, it aggravates your control of tooth decay. Because there's no saliva to help you with any stray coverings of sugar. You seem to be knowledgeable about dry mouth and its consequences, Tim. Do you think diabetes with dry mouth a problem for our community? Yes, especially for people who have become type 2 diabetics after constantly having to eat processed food, which is high in sugar, fat and salt content. For type 1 diabetics, if their family can't afford inverted commas whole foods, they would have to eat processed foods, which affects their control of the diabetes. So Tim, then what support or resources are available to manage your dry mouth? Well, the only thing I do is not only rinse my mouth when I arise to urinate, but thereafter whilst going to sleep, again encouraging saliva in my mouth and swallowing it before I sleep. You seem to be managing your diabetes very well, Tim. However, you must have some challenges. Which hurdles do you personally face living with diabetes and dry mouth and how do you overcome them? Please tell us a little bit. Well, because I've been on an insulin pump for eight years and the only reason they put people on an insulin pump is if they have an extensive knowledge on foods and insulin and uh, like different types of sugar and different types of yogurt. I am both able to control and in my insulin import with the exertion of wheeling myself or doing working like talking and I rarely become hyperglycemic because I will check my blood sugar as and when I'm finished. This is excellent Tim. As you mentioned you manage your diet really well. Can you tell me which foods and beverages 
should you avoid due to diabetes and dry mouth? Uh, I'd avoid anything normally with a high sugar content unless I'm going hypo. But water is freely available now and it will not harm you to rinse with regards your mouth unless it's vulpic fruit flavoured because that contains sugar and you do not want to rinse with that. Tim, let's move to talk about our clinical study and uh, you were one of the participants in our study. As you know, we use different type of dental varnishes. One contained only fluoride and the other one contained fluoride, calcium and phosphate to treat the root decays. How did you find the whole experience? Can you tell us a little bit? Yes, it was great being re-educated about my tooth care and coming off the dental flosses because the little thing they said was that you do not floss your teeth, you use interdental brushes. And that's a great thing because it doesn't get stuck in your teeth when it breaks. How did you find the whole experience being in our uh, clinical study? Could you tell us a little bit? Well, it was great being re-educated about my tooth care because I had become got into habits and they were not all good habits and I came off of dental floss and moved on to into dental brushes by your advice and it was a lot easier than using flossing and having flossing break in between your teeth you try to get a broken bit of floss out of your teeth and they're half hard it's great. So during the clinical study, how many times uh, did you have to come to the dental hospital? Uh, I think over a year. I think it was about four times. When you arrived at the dental hospital, what happened then? Well, I saw a clinician there. He introduced himself, whose name I cannot remember. And, well, he started, he examined, he then said, this is what I'm going to do with regards to varnishes and this is what hopefully it will help. The thing is is that like I say, said before my own dentist as thoroughly, she thoroughly likes what you do because the decayed parts in me too are hard, not soft now. How do you think the dental varnish applied regularly helped you with your decay and dry mouth? I know it helped because with the interdental brushing before a full brush twice daily, it has shown my dentist that the decay has hardened. It is no longer soft and I have apparently nil decay active in my mouth. Is there anything you would like to change about your diabetes care? If so, can you explain what you would like to change? Well, I would educate diabetics on both their food intake and their insulin input. But I'm on an insulin pump and with my brain and my pump, I am imitating my old pancreas. How else uh, can I help you, Tim? Uh, I think with what you've done, thank you for the help you've given me and the help you've given my teeth. And hopefully you can show other doctors, surgeons, what they might think of doing in the future. I hope you enjoyed Living with Diabetes and Dry Mart, a vicious circle podcast on diabetes and oral health. This conversation with Tim reminded me there is always more to say about the topic. Once I start, I can talk for hours. If you like this interview and want to learn more about my research and findings about diabetes and oral health, please check out my QMUL page and Instagram on Dr. Underscore A by Sun. Also join me in future to find out more about our patients' experiences with diabetes and dry mouth from their perspective. Bye for now.